Legos and Marvel are a match made in kid heaven. While the Marvel Cinematic Universe barged its way into our cultural consciousness back in 2008, Legos have long been omnipresent, having now made their way into our movies, video games, and carpets where they wait to strike our bare, vulnerable feet. Sandwiched between Traveler's Tales' two other successful Marvel superhero titles, LEGO Marvel's Avengers attempts to be a direct tie-in to Marvel's first two Avengers films while continuing to deliver on the playful open-world superhero action of its predecessor. With the culmination of Marvel's cinematic ambitions about to hit with Marvel's Infinity War, this seemed like the perfect time to complete LEGO Marvel's Avengers. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist. Now, I have been obsessed with all of these Marvel Cinematic Universe films for quite some time, and I'm really excited for Infinity War, which is out today in theaters. I was so excited to talk about it and to see it that I wanted to play a game that celebrated what the MCU was, and unfortunately, we haven't really seen that since I think the Captain America game on the PS3 a couple years ago. So, the next best step is with Legos. Today, we're gonna complete Lego Marvel Avengers. Let's begin. Yes! Right. Now, prior to their big screen team up in 2012, if you heard the words, the Avengers, it's likely that you thought of the 1998 action film starring Uma Thurman and Ray Fiennes. No, just me? Fair enough. But while Marvel's flagship team of heroes has a long comic book history dating back to the 1960s, they achieved new pop culture prominence when Nick Fury popped up in the after credit scene of Iron Man and said the words, the Avenger initiative and fanboys all over the world immediately started yelling about how it was never going to actually happen. It's not! Dude, they just made like a third Avengers movie. Yeah, I believe it when I see it! That shit is vaporware! Anyways, we were wrong, and Iron Man, Captain America, and friends came together to blow up the box office and usher in the golden age of the movie superhero. It was around the same time that LEGO was a few years deep into their LEGO video game versions of everything strategy, and it was paying off handsomely. Breaking into the now super mega popular world of Marvel superheroes was a no-brainer, and that's exactly what they did in 2013 with the release of the aptly titled LEGO Marvel Superheroes which featured Marvel superheroes who were made of, of, of Legos. That game featured an open world Manhattan for players to run around in as a whopping 180 different Marvel superhero characters, as well as a campaign mode with an original story that saw Marvel's vast assemblage of heroes going up against Galactus, the devourer of worlds, and wearer of the world's biggest purple hat. It's pretty big, come on, let's be real. While it pulled many aesthetic choices and characters from the film, it took even more from the comics, tying itself to the entirety of Marvel's brand, rather than just one branch of their massive empire. But people love some Avengers, and it was inevitable that LEGO would eventually capitalize on the success of those first two movies. Sorry, first three movies. With the campaign strongly tied to the plot of Avengers and Avengers Age of Ultron, with some quick stops along the way to visit Iron Man 3, Captain America Winter Soldier, and Thor The Dark World, this game ran the risk of feeling like a dashed off movie tie-in squeezed out between LEGO's more original Marvel superhero games. And that's pretty much how it was received when it first came out. Fortunately, the devs knew that if something ain't broke, don't fix it, which is the exact opposite approach to the one that I have when I'm making something out of Legos. If it broke, I'm just starting over, making it better. On top of allowing players to play through the plots of their favorite Marvel movies, they made sure to include the massive Manhattan hub that was so fun to fly around before, along with seven more goddamn hub areas ranging from Asgard to Sokovia, and 200 characters from both the comics and the films. So to complete LEGO Marvel's Avengers, I'll be playing through each of the game's 15 missions in its story mode, and then doing the same for the DLC missions, featuring everyone's favorite characters like Doctor Strange, Black Panther, and the Masters of Evil. Hooray! 
Next, I'll have to play through all of those missions again in free play, using characters' abilities to collect 15 red bricks, millions of studs, and all 150 mini kits, not to mention rescuing some Stan Lees, who have managed to get themselves into some deep trouble throughout the game's perilous yet adorable locations. Through all of this, I'll also be completing the game's achievements, which include playing as each of the game's 1,000 Iron Man armors. All right, it's more like 12, but it feels like 1,000. Once those missions are complete, that just leaves the hubs, where the rest of the gold bricks, character slash vehicle tokens, and Stan Lee's wait to be found. Manhattan is by far the largest, where most of my time is going to be spent smashing, collecting, and, well, mostly smashing, which is, as everyone knows, the main point of Legos. Smash. And the main point of Hulks, obviously. Injecting its superhero adventure story with some goofy LEGO humor, LEGO Marvel's Avengers is otherwise a fairly direct adaptation of the movies in its main missions, while feeling more like a follow-up to LEGO Marvel superheroes when in the hub areas. It even goes as far as to borrow visuals and voices directly from the films, and as a result, it's unclear at times if the game is for kids who love the movies or Marvel comic fans that know who Finn Fang Foom is. He's literally just a giant dragon that hates Iron Man, by the way, and he's the freaking best. And yes, he's in this game for all of you Finn Fang fanatics out there. The game literally starts you off in the exact opening sequence from Age of Ultron, but with Legos, before flashing back and taking you through the plot of the first Avengers, but with Legos, where the Avengers come together to take on Thor's evil brother Loki, but with Legos. Once Loki has been taken back to Asgard, the game races through the plots of Iron Man 3, Thor 2, and Winter Soldier in one mission each, before dropping you back where you left off in Age of Ultron, bringing the Avengers together one more time to stop Tony Stark's mistake from taking over the world with an army of hastily assembled murder bots. If you've never seen the movies, it's not going to feel like its own story, but it's still moderately fun to relive some of those moments through the lens of Lego style, with lots of jokes and obscure comic book references thrown in to keep you entertained. Apart from those jokes, in fact, pretty much all of the cutscenes outside of the DLC are pulled directly from the movies, even going so far as to use the audio from the films rather than finding new people to voice characters like Iron Man, Captain America, or everyone's favorite, Hawkeye. Just me? Again? All right, fine, whatever, Hawkeye's tight. The game does a solid job of squeezing lots of visual gags between those movie moments though, and kids especially are sure to be delighted by some of the goofy non sequiturs that have been injected into the Marvel Universe. For instance, Nick Fury loves smoothies. Who knew? In the non-Avengers missions and the DLC, those cutscenes are replaced by comic book style panels that fill you in on the plot before dropping you smack down into a quick scenario that usually lasts around 20 minutes or so because who has the time to save the world that often. It can be jarring to hear game-specific voice actors when you've gotten so used to hearing Robert Downey Jr. throwing one-liners out there. Then tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. Fortunately, there's still plenty of cameos, from Stan Lee to Clark Gregg's agent Phil Coulson. The LEGO style is still pretty set and sewn at this point, and everything in this game fits what you'd expect of a LEGO game. This is great for bringing the Marvel Universe a charming, kid-friendly feel, but can sometimes be a detriment to the overall style of the game. The locales are all very different, but on a visual level, everything just looks like LEGOs. And once the game eventually starts to run out of clever ways to put those pieces together into something distinct, it also starts to blur together until it's just Legos and nothing but Legos. Legos everywhere, as far as the eye can see. A sea of Legos in which I'm rapidly drowning my empty and pointless life flashing before my eyes. Wow, I think I just gained some sympathy for parents. Manhattan is where it's at, with the largest and most varied locale in the game, rewarding you for exploring it with as many characters as possible. Traveling between the missions and the hub areas can be a bit of a hassle, with long shots of your characters flying into space just to select a new location, but it's in these hubs that the game succeeds most at making you feel like a superhero by creating a sandbox for you to fly, swing around, and take Hulk selfies in. 
Yes, there are a number of missions in this game where the objective is to help characters take a selfie with the Hulk, and it honestly never stops being delightful in a weird way. The music does a decent job of enhancing that Marvel feeling by mixing the original compositions with the themes from the films. While some of the Marvel films have taken some slack for not having as distinctive of scores as some fans would like, there's no arguing against the fact that Alan Silvestri's Avengers theme has become iconic since the release of that first film, and it still makes me feel super pumped. Now, if only I felt that pumped when I'd watched the Uma Thurman movie. The rest of the music doesn't hype me up like that, but it never gets in the way, and every now and then it syncs up with the action for just some good synergy. Most of what works about the sound in this game, though, is borrowed directly from the films. All in all, the game's presentation operates just like many of LEGO's other tie-ins, appealing largely to people who are already a fan of LEGO or of the specific property being adapted to LEGOs. If you like LEGOs, then trust me, this game's got LEGOs. If you like Avengers, then guess what? But it's got Avengers. And if you like Hawkeye, Why do you like Hawkeye? That's not true. He's a beloved character, and you're not even my real dad. What? LEGO Marvel's Avengers is a game that offers lots and lots of stuff to do, but with very little variety within that, often modifying the same basic puzzles and battles only in the slightest. As a result, collecting everything and completing all the levels can feel very repetitive, and it's not going to differ wildly from the gameplay in other LEGO games, but the game offers a large enough variety of superheroes and locations for you to make your own fun, especially if you like feeling like a superhero. The foundation of LEGO Avengers is is, as you'd expect from LEGO game, vandalism. In order to collect studs, find secrets, and progress through levels, you've got to break stuff. And by stuff, I mean everything. There's slightly more to it than that, of course, but usually if you can't progress, it's because you haven't crushed that right thing with your fists yet. Even the specific character abilities are basically just different ways to break different things, like lasers for gold bricks or explosives for silver ones. Other characters have telekinesis or mind control. Some of them are giant dragons with the ability to turn themselves into an even bigger dragon. Okay, that's just Fin Fang Foo, but my point still stands. Most of the abilities are shared between multiple characters, which makes a lot of them feel less like characters in their own right, but a grab bag of abilities with the classic Marvel skin. Some of the characters, like the aforementioned dragon, have more unique abilities like growth or super speed. Those are the ones that are by far the most rewarding to play as because they're allowing you to interact with your environment in new ways, but it still falls comfortably within what you'd expect from these games. Some characters, like Ultron, and Vision have a vast number of abilities, which means they're basically Swiss army knives that you can use for a vast number of puzzles, which limits your need for many other characters, basically making them feel like glorified skins. Is it offensive to refer to robots as Swiss army knives? It sounds offensive. Once you've played through the missions in story mode, you of course get to play back through them in free play to collect 10 mini kits per level, using the abilities of characters you didn't have the first time through. There's the usual playful Rube Goldberg-esque layout out to many of the levels, and the uniform LEGO look at everything can sometimes make it difficult to tell what you're supposed to do next, but the levels never feel too similar on a gameplay level because the game is always contorting itself to fit scenes from the Avengers movies, at least during the main missions. Beyond the gold bricks, mini kits, and character tokens lying around, the game also tasks you with tracking down a red brick in each story mission, which is obtained by locating the collector and then fetching a rare item for him. Finding the items to unlock the red bricks isn't any harder than most of the game's other collectibles, but there's at least a tangible reward in the form of stud multipliers and various other bonuses. While running around with all the multipliers on may sound like cheating, I think you're overlooking how good it feels to look up to your stud count and see that you've collected over 20 billion of them. I've never had 20 billion of anything in my life, and I gotta say, I see the appeal. I get it. The puzzles and quick time events are simple as hell, and the only time it gets difficult is when the game is unclear about what it's asking you to do, or your objective gets lost in a sea of identical bricks. The missions lack freedom of exploration, but drive you forward through the plots of the movies in a way that makes it hard to get bored because something new is always happening. The open hub areas have the opposite problem, offering variations on the same few puzzles and quests over and over, but giving you a larger and more developed world to splash around in. 
in. It's honestly tempting to play the whole game as characters that can fly because flying around is smooth and easy, making transportation around the island of Manhattan a breeze. And it's kind of lucky that you don't have to rely on the game's vehicles because, man, they are a nightmare to control. And most of the land races are easier with flying characters anyway. Plus, it just feels cool to rocket through the city with Iron Man or leap over buildings as the Hulk to snap a quick selfie. Despite the similarities of a lot of the characters, there's just enough variety in their abilities to make switching frequently worth it. Captain America can't fly, but throwing his shield through eight guys and watching them all literally fall to pieces is never not going to be satisfying. Combat is usually just an issue of whacking your way through a series of henchmen, but certain characters definitely make it more fun. Much like Legos themselves, a lot of the game is giving you the pieces and then telling you to go play in your room because the living room is already a mess, Steve. Combat on its own isn't deep or satisfying, but teaming up with heroes in fun, weird combos allows it to feel just fresh enough to keep you going. So boss fights, which are often recreations of fights from the films, are usually a mix of puzzle elements with quick time events, which you can breeze through once you figure out which of your character's abilities you have to use. LEGO Avengers actually holds your hand slightly less than most of the other LEGO games, which is nice when it allows you to figure out something in an intuitive way, but frustrating when it feels like the game just isn't being clear enough about the exact path of the goddamn floor you're supposed to stand on to hit something with your flipping laser. By the time you're wandering the hubs in treasure hunting mode, though, you're well versed in the types of puzzles the game is going to throw at you, which makes it a rare treat when one deviates from the norm. I probably probably should have alternated exploration of the hubs with my runs through the story mode, because by the time you're collecting everything in Manhattan, the vast number of gold bricks and collectibles can start to feel disproportionate to how fun it is to unlock them. The gold bricks especially are hiding in an endless number of treasure chests, but the character missions at least bring dashes of personality to what can sometimes seem like a Sisyphean quest to unlock all 200 plus of the characters and vehicles. While it's boring to have to collect household items for characters over and over, you at least have the satisfaction of knowing that you're collecting things for Lou Ferrigno, or for my favorite dragon, Fing Fang Foom, who literally just wants your help opening up a Froyo shop. Most of the achievements are a piece of cake, either collecting a certain number of studs or playing as certain characters in certain areas. While they don't offer much of a challenge, they do provide fun Easter eggs for comic fans, with trophies handed out for teaming up Thor's buddies, the Warriors 3, or teaming up Nick Fury and Quicksilver, just so you can get that one called the Fast and the Furious. I see what you did there, Lego. I understood that reference. Thank you. LEGO Marvel's Avengers continually offers an experience that is just enough by giving you pretty much exactly what you are signing up for. The individual game mechanics are rarely exciting, but do you want to play through the Battle of New York? Done. Do you want to unlock endless obscure Marvel characters and feel good when you've heard of them before? We got you. Do you want to see what happens when the Hulk hangs out with Pepper Potts? It's weird, but you can do that. You can do that, you, you freak. Ugh. So while LEGO Marvel's Avengers keeps a steady stream of unlockable characters coming at you, it falls short when it comes to the rest of its collectibles. Every time you find a character token, complete a race, or do a side quest, you're rewarded with a shiny new hero or vehicle, which gives you incentive to keep seeking that stuff out. Hell, when you rescue all the Stan Lees, you even get a playable Stan Lee who has almost every power in the game, including the ability to hulk out or put on an Iron Man suit. It's dope that you're rewarded for that stuff, but the game falls short when it comes to the rest of its collectibles. But I soldiered on, and I unlocked hundreds of characters, rescued 35 Stan Lees, and found all the mini kits and gold bricks. What did I get for my troubles? Well, buckle up, my friends, because I was handsomely rewarded for my efforts with... A fountain. Yeah, you heard me right, a fountain. Once you've hit 100%, you pull a switch in Avengers Tower and you get a pretty little fountain that tells you you did a good job while raining studs from the sky. Worth it? At this point in the game, absolutely not. But it's definitely there. Lego Marvel's Avengers wasn't difficult to finish, but it definitely reached a certain level of tedium by the end. On top of that, I actually dreamed in Legos for a couple of nights, which can't be good for your brain. While it lacks the full-on creativity of LEGO's other Marvel games and leaned a little too heavily on the cinematic universe side, it did nothing to abate my excitement for Marvel's future after Infinity War, whatever it may hold. 
While I completed LEGO Marvel's Avengers, there were 36 Stan Lees rescued, if you count the real one that is, 250 gold bricks collected, 198 vehicles and characters unlocked, 30 hours of total playtime, and three versions of Hawkeye who is still the best character no matter what anyone says. I like him a lot, guys, come on. Lego Marvel's Avengers offers plenty of what's promised by all three words in its title, but it isn't going to win anyone over who isn't already a fan of Lego games or Marvel superheroes. It's worth collecting characters to get the full experience, but as far as the other collectibles go, it's more important to immerse yourself in the superhero sandbox that the game provides and save the world however way that you want to do it. At the end of the day, LEGO Marvel Avengers is an awesome time, but at the core of what LEGO games are, there is a simple thing to understand. If you've played one LEGO game, you've played them all, and it's very evident when you play LEGO Marvel Avengers. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing or a good thing, it's just a thing to know. For me, I've now played LEGO Star Wars and I've played LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean, so playing LEGO Marvel Avengers just felt like I was playing the same game, but with Marvel characters. So at the end of the day, you decide for yourself if the game is worth it. So with that in mind, guys, I give this game my completionist rating of Finish It. Finish It. That's all the time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know through about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you like what you saw today, hit that like button. Leave a comment down below about what games you want to see here next on The Completionist. And hey, if you're looking for a little more goodness about LEGO games, I actually voiced a Digino Gaming on LEGO Movie Games over at Digino Gaming. So if you want to see that, you can click or tap that right here on this screen. Guys, I've been Gerard The Completionist, and I will see you next week for another brand new episode of The Completionist. It's on God of War. Get ready!